Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to be looking at how to avoid the dreaded system overload message when you're using Logic Pro. So if you're running into that problem, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that you can do so that you can get back to making some music. So let's dive in. Okay, so I've got a track here. I've got a few software instruments loaded in. And when I go to play my track, I get the dreaded system overload message, which you'll see in a second. And there it is. And you also might have heard the audio was distorting a little bit. It doesn't sound all that great. So we're going to fix all that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK for starters. And the first thing I want to point out is actually up here in the control bar. If we go to this little arrow here and we go to custom, now I can actually see my CPU and hard drive meters. So this will help let me know when my system is about to crash in Logic and I'll get that message. And if you actually double click up here, then you'll get an expanded window where you can see more clearly what's going on here. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually look at our settings and preferences. So if we go up to the Logic menu and we go to preferences, or this will say settings if you're in Logic 10.7 and above, and we'll go to audio. Now there's a few settings that we want to change in here to optimize the way our computer's running. The first one here is the I.O. buffer size. So this number here, the smaller the number, the harder your computer is going to have to work. And with the larger number, there's going to be less strain on your computer. So setting this to a larger number, this is going to help our computer and help things run a little bit more smoother. Now, the downsides of just putting this number to 1024 is that the higher the number, the more latency you're going to get. So if I stay on 32, for example, you'll see here it says I have a resulting latency of 6.2 milliseconds. So if I'm recording something, for example, that's the time it takes for the audio to go into my audio interface, into Logic, and then back out of Logic, out of my audio interface, and for me to actually hear what's happening. So that's latency. Now if I increase this number to 1024, now you'll see the latency jumps up to all the way to 47.6 milliseconds. So that's a drastic difference. So when you're tracking and recording, you want to have this buffer size a little bit lower so that you get less latency. When you're in the mixing stage and you have a lot of plugins loaded in and all your instruments, then latency no longer matters to you because it doesn't matter if we hear things a split second later when we're mixing because we're not playing along to anything. So in that scenario, you can max out your buffer size to 1024. Generally speaking, when you're recording for most computers, I would say start at 256. If you've got a fast computer or you don't have a lot of tracks loaded in, then you can reduce this to 128. So since we're in the mixing stage, I'm going to bump this up back to 1024. Now, these processing threads, this is telling Logic how many threads to use from your CPU. So you want this to be at the maximum. By default, this will be set to automatic, but I would suggest that you just put this at the highest number. For process buffer range, this is going to work similar to the I.O. buffer size, where smaller is going to be harder on your computer and large is going to be easier. For general work, I would say leave this at medium. I'm going to put this to large for now so that things are the easiest on my computer as possible. We'll go ahead and hit apply. And now I can close my preferences and settings. You'll also notice here on our performance meter now, we now have all 16 threads loaded in. 
So at first we were just limited to the two threads and now we're at 16, so that's gonna help our computer quite a bit as well. So now if I just play that same section that I did before, we should have corrected that issue. So there you go, we solved that. Now, if you've done all that and you're still encountering some issues, then there's a couple more things you can try. The simplest one is to simply close any other programs you have open other than Logic. So if you have your web browser open or some other programs, make sure you close all of those so that your computer is solely devoted to Logic Pro. The next thing to do would be to freeze some tracks. So what freezing does is it'll essentially take any of our tracks and create an audio track of them. So for example, I have this violin here, which is a software instrument. And you can see here, it uses 343 megabytes of memory. So if this is converted to an audio track. It actually gets handled a lot easier by the computer. And as well, it's gonna write in all my compression and EQ, so all my plugins will just be written into that audio track as well. So what you do to freeze tracks is, first we need to get the little freeze button in here. So we right click on our track, we can go down to track header components, and we go to freeze. And now you see this little snowflake. And now for any track I want to freeze, I just hit the snowflake. And now when I hit spacebar, it's going to freeze all those tracks. And now that all those tracks have been frozen, if we open back up the meter here, just to take a look at that, we're likely going to see our meters be quite a bit lower than they were before we froze the tracks. So let's have a quick look at that. So overall, we can see that we're not even using half the threads and the rest of them are below 50%, except for just the one there. Now, one thing about freezing that I should mention is when your tracks are frozen, you cannot make any changes to them. So for example, if I open up the piano roll here, I cannot move this pitch without unfreezing it. And same thing goes with any plugins. So my EQ, for example, I can't open that without first unfreezing the track, but I can simply hit that snowflake once again. And then now I can go in my EQ and make any changes I want. And I can always refreeze it afterwards. So I hope that's helped you avoid the dreaded system overload message. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment box. And if you're looking to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, be sure to download my free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.